I had a girlfriend that overdosed and died, and I was in a room with her. And we had her nine month old with us, and she had four other kids. And I remember as I'm holding this young girl, this nine month old child thinking, I wasn't thinking about this young lady laying on the bed that lost her life. I wasn't thinking about her nine month old child that's in my arms. I wasn't thinking about her four children are now motherless. I wasn't thinking about her mother that does no longer have this lost her only daughter. I was thinking about her brother is a Port Authority cop and I'm going to jail. That, that's how I was thinking, all about me. That's how my selfishness, uh, it ruled my life. I'm a father, a brother, a veteran. I am someone you know. My name is Michael DeMeo. I am from uh, Delaware County, Pennsylvania. I was born in Drexel Hill. Good, normal upbringing, hardworking father. Mom was a stay-at-home mom. In 2001, had a work injury, fell off a ladder, and ultimately the injury led to a knee replacement, and uh, I was prescribed OxyContin and Percocet. And from Oct. October of 2001 up until I went into treatment in September of 2013. That's how long I used opiates. I continued to go to pain management. It's like I prescribed these drugs and I would sell my street, my prescription drugs and then I'd buy heroin. I look back from, from 89 to 2003, I went to 11 rehabs and 14 detoxes. Looking back and all the time that I spent feeding my addiction, you know, stealing, selling narcotics. Uh, it was so much work. It was a full-time job. In retrospect, now, recovery is so much easier. It's so much easier. I only have to put like a 16th of the effort in my day to stay in recovery compared to like all the hours that I spent in a day lying to others, breaking the law, to feed my, my addiction. I just want people to know that if you're out there and you're struggling, that you're not alone. There's 23 million Americans living in recovery. What we need as society, we need to work on getting rid of the stigma, and that's why I'm here. If I take this gift of recovery and hide behind my anonymity and say, no, I can't let anybody know that I'm in recovery. I can't let anybody know that recovery is can be amazing. You can go from having nothing to being nobody to having this rich, beautiful, educated life full of selflessness and volunteering. That's why I decided to tell people, yes, I'm in recovery and I'm a father, I'm a son, I'm a student, I'm a veteran, and recovery is possible. What can someone do to help other addicts? The one thing that I believe is important is not to enable, but also to find a way to understand about the disease, educate yourself about addiction. And I just wanna say that uh, we are not bad people trying to get good. We're sick people trying to get well. And as long as there's hope, as long as that person's alive, there's hope. So recovery is possible.